My name's Mike Harding, and welcome to the London Barbican Centre. The artist who at this moment is waiting in the wings is one of the greatest singer-songwriters in the world, and I don't say that lightly. The respect and admiration she's shown by fellow artists will become evident as she introduces her guests tonight. Will you please give a great, roaring London welcome to Miss Nancy Griffith.
We've got so many wonderful guests uh, here for you to hear this evening and to celebrate the inventing of American folk music. Right over here, the gentleman who was the first one to really believe in me in an as an artist when I was about 16 or 17 years old was the first one to ever record one of my songs. A pal of mine and I, we've worked together over the years so many times and uh, he's the bass singer in all of this stuff, Mr. Tom Russell. And his partner in crime over there, that tall dude, Mr. Andrew Harden. Sing, singer, songwriter, and pal of my heart for many years. In fact, we at one point were married to one another. Mr. Eric Taylor from Houston, Texas. And of course, two American icons, uh, uh, beginning um, with a woman who was, who Bob Dylan says not only was she the one that got away, but she was the one that got him his record deal. She was also dear friends with Buddy Holly. She's a good old West Texas girl, just like me. Buddy, in fact, produced her first album and I think was one of the people that convinced her to move to Manhattan when she was 17 years old. Uh, what a pioneer she is, Miss Carolyn Hester. She's the voice of the angels. And of course, a woman over here that 
All of you know her songs when you hear her voice. I've always said that if God had a voice that you could hear on a daily basis, out loud, prominently in your heart, it would be the voice of Odetta. Odetta is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the release of her first album. And Dave Van Ronk celebrating the 40th anniversary of his first album. This is the first song I ever heard uh, uh, that my dad played and wore out, uh, that Dave Van Ronk. It's a traditional song, and Dave Van Ronk was responsible for bringing this to the people. And we hope you brought your vocal cords and are ready to sing. He was a friend of mine. Hester was a voice of my childhood, along with Buddy Holly and the Crickets, that was the most influencing in, in what I wanted to do with my music. And her voice was a voice that I always, always held dear and considered to be the sweetest voice ever. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. Good. 
setting up her lovely fiddle, one of the most loveliest and elegant ladies from Ireland, and the greatest fiddle player, certainly, Miss Mary Custy. We're going to do you a song of uh, Tom Russell's that we recorded on Other Voices too with Ian Tyson. And... Um, People have written me letters and asked if this song is somewhat similar to who I really am. Um, John Stewart has referred to me many times as the Greta Garbo of the music industry. But this song really is something that Tom knows, because not only do I not drink Canadian whiskey, I drink Kentucky bourbon. And my eyes are not the color of Canadian whiskey, they're green. Tom, take it away. This is about a lady I met. Prince Rupert, British Columbia, who drank whiskey as if it were wine. Tragic error of judgment. <laughs> May she rest in peace. I'd like to send it down to this young lady in the front row with a Kerrville t-shirt on. and I know she's a big Nancy fan. And My first memory of Nancy was at the Kerrville Folk Festival. Back in the weeds, 15-year-old lady with a guitar. None of us macho men around the campfire would open and part ways to let this young lady in and sing. Finally, somebody forced her to come up to the front of the fire, and I was blown away. Been blown away ever since. So we'll send this out to you. Thank you, Tom. Canadian whiskey. <laughs> There's a timber wolf out Rangers are proud For a woman She'd run away From an Indian 
Russell and I co-wrote this next song sitting at my kitchen table in Nashville, Tennessee, um, laughing over an incident that had occurred between my uh, sweetheart of that time. He's long gone now. <laughs> Tom, you got your seatbelt on? Yes, ma'am. Got your tray table up? Yes, ma'am. Seat back up? Yep. Ready to go? Valuable stowed very safely. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? Here we go, Andy.
long ago and far away when Eric and I were uh, married to one another, we had a dear friend who, Ian, there you are, Ian Matthews is back with us, just a uh, We had a dear friend who would come in from the sea. He was a real fisherman down in South Texas, and uh, he wrote this next song. It's on other voices, too. And uh, we also had uh, this, this other dear friend who, he, he was kind of the adopted son that we never wanted. Even, even though he, uh, even though he's only three years younger than I am, he still was the adopted son that I never wanted and sometimes still is. But we still love him anyway. But uh, he came in and sing it, sang it on the album with us. And it was such a pleasure to have the three of us. This is a song that uh, Eric Taylor and Lyle Lovett, our adopted orphan son, and I used to sing late at night together. It's a John Gramato song called Dress of Laces. And with him does you 
And she has a need for shame Someone warm and caring No one sees a heart that's on the fair You know, there's a gentleman from your country, your native country, now lives out where Carolyn does in L.A., who, who created an entire genre of music uh, right here with this man, Ian Matthews, and combining traditional music and, and pop and folk and blues, and I don't know what else you guys put together to come up with what you came up with in Fairport Convention, but you were pretty extraordinary. And um, this has always been my favorite song of, of Richard's, Thompson's, because... It's all about taking risks. And if anybody ever took a risk, it was Richard, who is just one of the greatest guitar players ever, as well as one of being one of the finest songwriters ever. And, and uh, so take your chances. If you, as Truman Capote says, when you take your chances, just take your chances. If you don't take the chances, you're never going to go. You're never going to get on that motorcycle and ride on the wall of death.
many, many years, Mr. Clyde Gregson. And originally from Fairport Convention, now living in my hometown of Austin, Texas, Mr. Ian Matthews. And my co-producer in all of this mischief of other voices, other rooms, Mr. Jim Rooney. Last but not least, my sister of arms, truly a sister of arms who could pull me out of any fire, the queen of soul of Ireland, the voice that comes up out of the earth and just out of her mouth, Miss Dolores Keene. Please come and join me, Sister of Arms, Miss Dolores Keene. We gotta pay tribute to a woman who influenced the sounds of women's voices and passed on so early. And oh, we miss her, but she left us such great songs. Fairport Convention's Sandy Denny, to her memory.
I have a grandmother who's 101 years old this year, and she says that this next song that I have written is maybe not the prettiest song that I've ever written, but the most important, because it taught her that I was actually paying attention as a child. And Dr. Martin Luther King taught us that there are no bad babies born upon the face of this earth. All babies are born good. It's what we give them in love, what we teach them in education, what we lend to them in trust, what we teach them in the deliverance of tolerance of others' differences, that they will return to us in the dream of the future. They are the next of us. They deserve the best of us. Whatever hatreds we've developed within our lives, our children do not deserve to have them passed on to them. All they deserve is love, because it's a hard life wherever you go.
man that I consider to be the father of American folk music for the latter part of this century turns 80 this year. This next song is, is, is a song that he wrote um, very early on in, in the career that he had with a band called The Weavers. And unfortunately in America at that particular time we had a thing going on called McCarthyism where we had this senator by the name of Joe McCarthy. Senator McCarthy went about trying to pinpoint every commie in America and by golly they were going to be silenced or sent out of the country. Got people like John Wayne, Ronald Reagan, got them up there on the Senate floor to name those names of all those actors and Screen Guild writers and musicians and songwriters and artists. All of them they thought were commies and by God they did it too. Named those names. Destroyed people's lives. Somehow the sweet man who wrote Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Who brought us the song Weem Away in 1947 from South Africa, the greatest freedom song of the South African people. Somehow this sweet man named Pete Seeger ended up on that list. And I've wonder, always wondered, how? How did that happen? Maybe Pete Seeger is a communist. I don't care, it's none of my business. But at any rate, the rest of the world didn't get to hear Pete Seeger and Lee Hayes and Weaver's songs. I had beatniks for parents, so they went out and got the records anyway. But Pete Seeger was blacklisted. You couldn't hear him on the radio, couldn't see him on the television, you couldn't read about him in the paper. He was totally blacklisted until the 60s came along and folks like Crispin St. Peter's, Peter Paul and Mary, Trini Lopez, Judy Collins, Bob Dylan, brought his songs back to us. You all know this song. Please sing along. Help us out on Pete Singers, If I Had a Hammer.
Sie, Griffith.